In this video, I wanna share some tips with you guys about how to adjust recipes for the Instant Pot Mini. Most recipes online and in cookbooks are designed for the six quart Instant Pot because that was the first size that was released and it's still the most popular. And while it's usually pretty straightforward uh, just to reduce a recipe in half if you're gonna be cooking it in the Instant Pot Mini, there are a few things to keep in mind. When I was researching for this video, I found a great article on hippressurecooking.com, which is a, an amazing blog that you should check out if you're into pressure cooking. And it's all about adjusting recipes for the Instant Pot Mini. And I will put the link for that down in the description below. First off, some technical info, and then I will get into the practical tips. The Instant Pot Mini is rated at 10.1 PSI, while the uh, larger sizes of Instant Pot are rated at 11.6 PSI. So what that means is that the Instant Pot Mini will come up to pressure a little bit faster than the other models because it's not going to as high of a pressure. But I will say that practically, I have not noticed that the difference in PSI has made a big difference uh, when I'm cooking recipes. I've used the same cook time charts and recipes um, from my larger Instant Pots and I have never had an issue. So I would recommend just sticking with what you know works in um, the bigger Instant Pots. And if you do run into a recipe that doesn't get cooked enough in the amount of time called for, you can add a few minutes. But thus far, I have not had a problem with that at all. The main obstacle that I have found in adjusting recipes for the Instant Pot Mini is making sure you meet the minimum liquid requirements. The Instant Pot Company recommends one and a half cups of liquid as a minimum, although practically a lot of people don't use quite that much. I find that I have no trouble getting the pot up to pressure with three quarters of a cup or a cup. So as long as you still have around a cup of liquid in your recipe, you should be fine. And remember that the liquid in the food that you're cooking counts towards that minimum liquid requirement. So if you're cooking meat or uh, something like mushrooms that release a lot of liquid when they cook, uh, you can count that towards the liquid requirement and you don't have to add an entire cup of water or broth. So since most recipes are written for the six quart, it's pretty easy to cut the recipe in half um, and use it in your three quart without filling the pot too full. Uh, but if you do find a recipe that's designed for the eight quart Instant Pot, you might wanna do a little bit of math to figure out if you're gonna overfill your pot if you cut the recipe in half. The Instant Pot liner has the one half line and the two thirds line, and those you don't wanna go over when you're pressure cooking. The one half line is for things like rice and beans and anything that foams, like pasta and stuff like that. The two thirds line is for pressure cooking anything else. The half line is six cups and the two thirds line is eight cups. So when you're trying to figure out if halving the recipe will still fit um, and not overfill your pot, you can just add up the ingredients real quickly and make sure it's not over six or eight cups depending on what you're cooking. Now I'm gonna break down some tips by category of different things that you might be cooking in the Instant Pot. The first category is soups and stews. The second category is other recipes that are not as watery as soups and stews, but that you cook in your liner. That would be things like meat sauces and curries and uh, pork chops and roasts and chicken thighs, things like that. The third category is steamed items like veggies or eggs that you would have in a steamer basket or on a trivet above just water. The fourth category kind of falls into the steam category, but it's pretty different. Um, so I gave it its own category and that is baked goods. So soups and stews are usually the easiest recipes to adjust for the mini. Basically, you just cut all the ingredients in half and you should have still have plenty of liquid to meet the minimum liquid requirement. And then the cook time will remain the same. Now for other recipes cooked in the inner pot that are not as watery or liquidy as soups and stews, it gets a little bit more tricky. I would recommend cutting all of the ingredients in half and then checking to make sure that you still have about a cup of liquid. If you don't have a cup of liquid or foods containing enough to make a cup of liquid, then I would recommend adding a little bit more to get to that cup. And then if when you're finished cooking, it's still too watery and you wanna reduce some of that liquid, just put the pot on saute mode and boil it off after you've taken the lid off and you can get it down to the consistency that you want. Now the cook time is gonna depend on the size of item that you're cooking in the Instant Pot. So if you are taking a recipe that calls for four chicken thighs and reducing it down to two chicken thighs, 
The size of the chicken thigh remains the same between both recipes, so the cook time is gonna remain the same on the Instant Pot Mini as it would in the bigger Instant Pot. But if you are taking, say, a four pound roast and cutting it in half and using only half to make a two pound roast, then the size of the item changed, which means you're gonna to wanna to reduce the cook time. I would recommend reducing the cook time by maybe a quarter or even a half. You can always add more minutes at the end if it's not quite done to your liking, uh, but that should give you a good start. The next category is steamed items like veggies or eggs that you would have in a steamer basket or on a trivet that has just water underneath. For these recipes, I recommend just cutting the ingredients in half except for the water underneath. Just make sure you have a cup to a cup and a half of water underneath and you should be fine and the cook time should remain the same. The last category, and definitely the most tricky, is the baked goods category. If you have a cake or a cheesecake or something like that that you want to reduce in half, you would want to reduce the ingredients in half and then also reduce the pan size in half. So if you have a recipe that calls for a six cup bunt pan, then you could reduce that down to a three cup bunt pan really easily. But remember, since the density of the item that you're cooking, the cake, is going down, the cook time is gonna be down, going down as well. I found when I was adjusting a bunt pan recipe that I was able to cut the cook time in half. It called for 60 minutes and I was able to cook it in 30 minutes. So um, again, with baked goods, it's really easy to add a few minutes uh, at the end if it's not quite baked thoroughly. It's a little annoying to release the pressure and then have to put it back in, but um, it is possible and you don't usually mess up the baked good when you do that. Of course, adjusting cook time is gonna depend on what you're cooking and it could vary from thing to thing. So you might have to do a little bit of tweaking to find what would be just right. For recipes that call for a cake pan, uh, a lot of recipes for the Instant Pot are uh, designed for a six inch pan. And in order to cut a six inch pan in half to a smaller circle sized pan, it would have to be like four and a quarter inches uh, in diameter, which is kind of an odd shape to find. So if I need to cut a recipe in half, I usually use a, a four inch pan or a five inch pan, depending on if I want the end result to be a little thicker or a little thinner. But I also wanted to mention that a six inch pan does fit in the Instant Pot Mini just fine. So all of those recipes out there for cheesecakes and different cakes in six inch pans, you can totally just leave as is and make in your Instant Pot Mini. One last tip on baked goods is if your recipe that you're trying to cut in half calls for an odd number of eggs, like three eggs, my recommendation is to use one egg and then use either just the egg yolk or just the egg white with it. If you use the egg white, it makes the end result a little bit more fluffy and bouncy, so it's great for things like muffins or pancake bites or something like that. Uh, if you're making something that's supposed to be more creamy and dense, like a cheesecake or fudgy brownies, I'd recommend going with the egg yolk. So those are my tips for adjusting recipes for the Instant Pot Mini. Let me know down in the comments if you've run into any trouble adjusting to the Instant Pot Mini and what you did to resolve it. I would love to hear. Hope you guys are doing real great and I will talk to you again soon.